Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We've got a load of ship-based updates for you today. Fleet Week is finally here. I want to talk a bit about that and the sort of Idris tour. Absolutely loving the interior of the Idris. There's been a response from CIG about the medical bed drama, the um, medical respawn changes that they recently made in Alpha 3.23.1 and the future of that. And CIG have revealed some more details about ships in production and the release details of the Polaris. I've been messing around with the Idris, trying to get footage of that and doing its sort of tour that's available during Fleet Week. It sort of comes and docks with the low orbit stations. Now, I've also been trying to get footage of the Polaris in the UEE fleet flying around, but that's proven difficult because it doesn't seem to turn up for me. I'll persevere though. Zin will probably have more luck than me. Really liking the Idris being open for tour though, and most of it is explorable um, interior-wise. There's a few sort of rooms and areas that aren't, they either sort of blocked off or they're not, not finished yet or something like the missile room, stuff like that. There's also, some of the rooms are a bit bare bone. There's not really props there, and that's sort of um, places like the armory. There's no real weapons on display and nothing really happening at the fire range. Some of these areas really would benefit from activity going on or some of the sort of functions of the ship being shown off. But it's really amazing being able to just get in there, have a look around and a load of the lifts and panels and stuff like that being functional. You're able to get onto the bridge and the hangar. The hangar is where all the magic happens for me. We'll be getting a full tour of that up at some point in the next week or so. So we know some of the prices of the new ships and vehicles that have been released during Fleet Week. The Ursa Medivac, that's um, $55 to $60, based on whether you buy it with store credit or not. Warbond is cheaper, so that fresh money is cheaper. Uh, and the MPUV Tractor, um, that's um, $35 to $40 again, um, with the same caveats. Um, both those available and flyable now. We don't know the price of the Sabre Firebird yet. We do know it's a missile version of the Sabre Raven, basically. We also know there is another version of the Sabre, some form of Sabre variant um, that is going to be uh, coming out at some point. It doesn't appear to be coming out during Fleet Week, though, but soon. Uh, are they going to be selling the F7As or other Mark II Hornets during Fleet Week? Maybe. We don't know. We do know that there is a new Drake concept ship or vehicle that will be revealed during Drake Defense Con. So that's going to be on the 25th of May uh, on Saturday. So bear that in mind, there is a new concept that is going to be unveiled during that time. Now, CIG have also been talking about what ships are being actively developed at the moment. The Polaris will be flight ready and released at the um, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2954. So that should be in November. Half of the UK art team are working on the Polaris. And once they're done with that, there'll be a load of them be able to work on other ships, assumedly our other RSI ships. Also, Fleet Week is the last chance to get the Polaris at a bargain price of between $700 and $750. Oof, that is expensive. I have no idea how much it's going up by. Probably like 20%, something like that would be my expectation. We'll have to wait and see. You'll be able to get this in-game. You'll be able to get pretty much everything uh, in-game, so uh, bear that in mind. Um, as I said, there's going to be a brand new uh, concept vehicle from Drake at DefenseCon. It's concept, so you're not going to be able to rent it, but you will be able to buy it. Uh, they've got half of the 10 ships that they showed at CitizenCon out, and the remainder are in now in production. They should all be out by the end of the year, except potentially the Legionnaire, as there's more work that needs to be done with that, and they haven't got enough resources to be able to um, dedicate enough time to the Legionnaire, it sounds like. Uh, they are also working on various more unrevealed ships, so there are uh, more beyond those 10 they showed at CitizenCon that they're working on. Uh, the Zeus ES is going to be coming out with 4.0, and is apparently setting new standards due to how good it looked during its LOD Zero review. The Zeus CL um, will follow that later in the year, and the um, MR, the, the Mark version, will be coming out a bit later than that, I assume, after uh, this year. Uh, there is a, another Sabre variant, as I said. It's not the Firebird, but it's coming out soon. There are variants of some ships that we're going to be seeing over the next few months as well that they haven't announced yet. They've been getting a load of different uh, popular ships ready for engineering for Alpha 4.0 as well. So really excited to see all these gameplay loops come together. Lots of stuff coming in Alpha 4.0, which is expected at the end of Q3, at the end of September at the moment. So um, very, very exciting time for Star Citizen.
A quick note about the RSI Urza uh, med bed and uh, the sort of changes that they made to medical beds in general. CIG said, the intention is for all medical beds to enable respawning with each type of bed offering unique benefits. We're closely monitoring the experience and your feedback as always, and we anticipate making adjustments as necessary while also pushing forward towards the ultimate vision. So this stuff might change quite significantly and the allowing of respawn beds, all of them, to be able to respawn players. It's not going to be unrestricted. There are going to be some restrictions to them. It's going to be range. I'm thinking there's going to be um, sort of ways that you have to have some sort of a medical fluid or valuable uh, medical substance which is used every time you respawn, stuff like that. Uh, the Urza Medivax med bed respawning capability is a small component of a wider interconnected set of systems that CIG have dubbed some time ago as Death of a Spaceman. This framework encompasses everything related to a player's health, death, respawn, and legacy. While the respawning system is currently active in-game, other related systems such as regeneration, degradation, inheritance, and other components of Death of a Spaceman are yet to come online. It remains our intent for dying and respawning to carry a notable impact, adding more meaning and danger to your adventures in the verse. So, Death of a Spaceman, mortality, and you not really wanting uh, to die is going to be an important part of the game still. And um, this sort of ability to respawn quite so freely and easily is temporary, at least in the form we currently have it. Because at the moment, you can go, oh, I'm badly injured. This tier three bed can only sort of uh, heal tier three wounds. But it also allows me to respawn, so you can forcibly respawn yourself and then effectively be healed of all your injuries. Now, um, in the future, I'm hoping that even if it's just short term again, uh, they'll go, well, actually, if you respawn at these beds, you still have any uh, injuries that are beyond tier three or it doesn't heal any of your injuries. You have to still have to do that at the bed. Really interested to know what people think about those uh, ideas in the comments below. There is a 3.23.1 hotfix patch, a, a build for Star Citizen, that is a different drop-down uh, from the launcher. So bear that in mind. You can rename your live folder hotfix and then just update this. Um, it's a, yeah, as I said, a separate drop-down, which is a bit weird. I'm not sure why there's a hotfix version and a live version. Why not just go bam, straight onto live? But maybe they're testing it and they didn't want to deploy it to the PTU, question mark, because the hotfix build does connect to the live build, and both builds work um, with um, players, so bear that in mind. Uh, it does fix a load of issues and performance issues, because it disables some debugging, um, which may help with performance. It certainly helps me with performance. It stops the hitching happening so much. It also has some uh, client crash fixes, server fixes, stuff like that. Uh, med beds are no longer added as potential spawn points when the vehicle is being stowed by an ATC as well, but that's more of a server update. But it was listed in the patch notes. Yeah, so that's it for your updates today. I'm going to continue looking for the Polaris. It's obviously on the show floor um, on, on at the expo, but I want to fly around with it. I want to see it. I know it. I know it does exist. I'm really interested to know, are you going to be purchasing any ships or vehicles during Fleet Week? It's obviously a free fly period as well, so you can try Star Citizen for free and rent any of those um, ships and vehicles that are going to be appearing at the Expo Hall at uh, Area 18 throughout. So, um, yeah, go and test stuff out. Do you like the idea of the Urza Medivac and you're like, well, actually, I'm going to I'm gonna buy one now because it allows me to respawn stuff? Uh, or uh, are you going, well, actually, I quite like the idea of the MPUV tractor. Um, although I do think there are other better options. I've got the Sabre Firebird. That's going to be released during Aegis Day. Do you think they're actually going to sell the F7As? Uh, or do you think it's going to be something that you have to get in game? And what do you think this new Drake concept is? Whatever your thoughts or questions, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Also, down below, there's links to nordvpn.com slash boardgamer. Click on that for a discount on NordVPN. The best darn VPN I've ever used. It gives me better accessibilities of the interwebs, but also better privacy and securities and that sort of stuff. And if you're concerned about that sort of thing or you want an extra tool in your security belt, I would recommend it. Yeah, check it out down below um, for a discount. Also, 
for a discount until the 20th of May. We've got Toby Eye Tracker 5. They're on sale at the moment for precision eye and head tracking in Star Citizen that is natively supported. Check that out as well. May in Star Citizen is about fleets and fleet week and flying with friends and we've partnered up with Lunar Wolves, a Star Citizen org, to give away a fleet of ships. Commenting on any of my videos during the month not only gets you a chance to win a Spirit C1, but also a Constellation Andromeda, a Vanguard Sentinel, and a Corsair, courtesy of Lunar Wolves. They'll each be going out to a different winner chosen randomly from the video comments. But wait, there is more. Sign up to the Lunar Wolves recruitment page link down below for a chance for even more ships including an rsi polaris with lifetime insurance and a hornet f7c mark ii winners of those will be selected randomly from eligible org signups Lunar Wolves welcome all that share their passion for adventure and love of star citizen you can learn more about them on their org page or at lunarwolves.org if you would like to further support our channel please like subscribe comment share these videos and if you'd like to go the extra mile and i would love you to please consider becoming a patreon or clicking that join button under my videos it goes a huge way in allowing us to make daily content and keep the channel going you'll get some exclusive content from that as well any time zinn and i can actually put it out as well as help evolve the channel with polls and suggestions and that sort of stuff thank you so much for watching to the end and have a great may it's going to be a good one